And yesterday, the first law on wetland protection in China has launched. And many that in the future, we have a law to protect the wetlands. And today, we will talk about the natural reserve and also the conservation of the mangrove. And also, you could see we have a pavilion here to give you more knowledge about the protection of the wetland as well as the mangrove. So also we are joined by a special guest. So maybe you could start with an introduction of the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve. So for this natural reserve was established in 1980, and it is the first natural reserve to protect the mangrove. And also this place is the largest wetland protection zone in China. And also in our natural reserve, we have uh, the biggest continuous mangrove forest. So for the size of the Dongzhai Harbor, can you tell us more about this? So for the Dongzhai Harbor, it has a size of 3,337.6 hectares, and within which over 1,700 hectares belongs to the mangrove forest. And here, actually, we have three areas. Actually, you could see we have the core areas, the buffer areas, and the experimental areas. Can you tell us more about these three areas? So for the core area and the buffer area, these are the control areas from the government. And for example, we do not allow any visitors to come to this place. We need to have some scientists to come to those places with special permit to do the scientific studies. And also, we have these like special uh, knowledge sharing areas in the experimental zone. And also, you talk about for this place, it is focusing on the protection of the mangrove forest. We always talk about mangrove forest and we have to protect the wetland. I'm not sure what exactly the species of the mangrove. Can you tell us more about the mangrove forest? So when people come to this place, they're also very curious about the mangrove forest because they're expecting to see some of the red trees. So actually for the mangrove, I would say inside it is red. However, if you look at the skin, it is not in red color. This is because for most of the mangrove, uh, they will they are quite rich in tannins. So just like you are eating an apple, if you peel the skin of the apple, and then uh, for some of the meat will be oxidized. And this is the same situation for the mangrove. If you peel off the bark of the mangrove, and then you could see inside of the mangrove, it is in red. We always talk about we have to restore the mangrove forest. We have to protect the mangrove forest. Why is that? Is it because it is quite in danger? Or we have a great significance to protect the mangrove forest? Yes, indeed. Actually, we have like a limited species of the mangrove forest. And this also happened in different parts of the world. That's why China has attached great importance for the conservation and the restoration of the mangrove forest. And for us, I think the mangrove forest is very important for us, especially for the coastal areas. Because in this place, if we grow a huge amount of the mangroves, it will help us to protect the typhoon and the wind. For some of the um, people, if they live along the coastal line, if they are protected by the mangrove forest, so their houses and will not be damaged because of the typhoon. So as far as I know, for some of the trees, if they are uh, rich with the elements of talents, so some of those trees will fall into the category of the mangrove. So how many types we have for the mangrove? So there's always a saying that uh, for 
the best mangrove forest of China is in Hainan. And if you want to look at the best uh, mangrove forest of Hainan, you have to visit the Dongzhai Harbor. So actually in the Dongzhai Harbor, 97% of the mangrove could be seen in the Dongzhai Natural Reserve. And we have about like 19 families and 13, seven kinds of the mangrove. So how we formed the Mangrove Natural Reserve can tell us more about the history. Actually, for this harbor, uh, it is quite young in age. It has only like 400 history. I would like to say uh, back in Ming Dynasty, there was a very intense uh, earthquake. And for some of the places, sank because of the earthquake and also inform such a natural reserve or we say a natural harbor. So above the harbor there were over 20 streams of the water coming to the harbor and also it created very favorable conditions to grow the mangrove forest. So with the development and the growing of the mangrove, and right now we are seeing this spectacular view of the mangrove. So now we are coming to the second floor. So can you tell us more about the second floor? Here I would like to show some of the uh, samples to demonstrate the biodiversity. You just talk about some of the history of the Dongzhai Harbor. I believe right now the biodiversity is doing a good job, especially in the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve. And actually, we are quite rich of the types of the animals and different small insects and the creatures. So right now, you could see different types of birds. So we are taking all of these photos exactly in the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve. Especially when the scientists are doing the research, they are able to capture some of the pictures of these birds. So for these birds, are they live in this natural reserve for a long time, or they just stay here for a short time? So actually for the uh, natural reserve, it is a wetland protection zone. And for some of the uh, migratory birds, they would like to travel to Hainan province from north in about August or September. So it is not like we could see all of these birds all year round because some of these are migratory birds. They only visited the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve in certain months. Except for the migratory birds, we could also see different species of other types of birds. And also people were saying that um, if in a, you're living in the northern part of China, you could actually see the sandstorm. However, if you come to the Hainan province, you could actually see a storm of birds. You also talk about uh, we always have an observation facilities setting up in the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve. Can you tell us more about this? How to protect the biodiversity in the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve? Except for the biological restoration, we also do a routine monitoring of the species in the Dongzhai Harbor Natural Reserve. For example, we will observe the different species of the birds, uh, especially in different sections. We will calculate and we will try to record different types of birds and also to capture some of the basic information of those birds. For example, we want to understand when these migratory birds come and when they leave. And this will provide a lot of like big data for us to better manage the natural reserve. For example, I will point out a specific bird, what we call the black bird. And um, in general, from the whole world, we only have like uh, 6,000 birds in the world. But uh, just in Dongzhai Harbor, 
we are able to identify 19 birds. So if we are able to detect some of those endangered species, we also report this information to the Natural Reserve Center. And in the future, we'll continue to restore some of the biological environment so that we could attract more species of the birds. So for some of the birds, they may come in certain periods, but after certain years, they will never come back. And in this case, we will try to find out the reasons, and we will try to improve our environment so as to, to protect all of these animals as well as the plants. So actually for the natural reserve, it actually pr provides very good uh, habitats uh, for the animals as well as the um, mangrove. So you just give us a lot of um, information about the natural reserve. Now we are stepping into the mangrove forest to see what plants and what animals are in the mangrove forest. So I was actually quite curious about the history of the Dongzai Harbor Natural Reserve. So as I said, the Natural Reserve was established in 1980. We only have a few people managing this place. So at that time, we are just like paying attention to um, the trees growing in the natural reserve. And also for the local residents back in the 1980s, they actually earned a living from the natural reserve. But as time passes, the provincial government have attached great importance to the protection of the natural reserve. So right now you could see uh, for the Dongzai Harbor Natural Reserve has become a national level natural reserve. And also we have like uh, people staying alongside with the coastal line of the Dongzai Harbor Natural Reserve to do the conservation work. So throughout the development of the natural reserve, we always do a lot of good job for the biological restoration. Are there any achievements? Start from 1980s, for the natural reserve have been paying attention to the biological restoration, especially for the restoration of the mangrove uh, forest. So start from 1980s, we have already uh, restored 5,667 mu of mangrove forest. Uh, this is actually not an easy task to do. And also we have to protect the biodiversity and to create a good environment to grow the mangroves. So now we are coming to the plank road. So are these trees the mangrove? So actually, you can feel this transition from land to the wetland. So actually, we have some of what we call the semi-mangrove. Because for this semi-mangrove, they do not have to soak itself into the ocean or the tidal flats. And here, we are able to see some of the true mangrove. And here you are able to see uh, some of the plants, what we call the brugara. And also you could see some of the holes on the brugara. This will help all of these uh, trees to breathe. So because for some of these trees, they have been soaked inside of the tidal flats. So with all of those breathing holes, they're able to breathe and also to absorb the oxygen. So when the title comes up, it will actually um, make all of these mangrove soaking or being submerged by the periodic tidal water. 
So when the tide comes up, we are not able to see the roots of all of this mangrove. Because when the tidal comes up, so all of these roots are actually submerged by the tidal water. So along the plank road, uh, we could see um, different seedlings. What are these? So this is um, an experimental field. So for some of the seedlings, uh, the growing period is only about one year. It's just a test for us. Because for some of these seedlings, it also takes a long time to grow and to get mature. So this is the first step. We have to grow this seedling. And also later, uh, with the change of the tidal change, uh, we will try to identify whether all of these uh, seedlings can survive. So as we said, uh, for the mangrove, they actually grow in the tidal flats along the coastal lines in the tropical and the subtropical coast. So I think in this case, um, there may be a lot of evolution of different species of the mangroves. So we now understand that for some of the mangrove forests, they, they're actually like generating uh, different species just like human beings because they also carry the amboil and also trying to grow the seedlings of the mangrove. So right now we are doing the restoration and uh, eco-protection of the mangrove forest. So how many personnel we have been invested into the conservation work? So actually we have seven dedicated researchers for the conservation of the mangrove forest. Actually we welcome people from the, bu from the public or the experts uh, coming to the Dongzai Harbor Natural Reserve to join us and uh, for the protection of the mangrove forest. And also we have some young students graduated from the Xiamen University. They will also like to join us for the conservation work. So right now for the breeding of the seedlings, all of these are done by the experienced uh, scientists. Because for these people, they have been staying in the Dongzai Harbor for a really long time. So they could use their experience to breed different species. So any endangered species in the mangrove forest. So actually, I would like to uh, emphasize a specific species, what we call the Nomisara littoria. So actually, there are a lot of stories associated with the Nomnizera. So I heard that seven or eight years ago, we only have like 14 species or 40 pieces of the Littoria. So how's everything going right now? With eight years of efforts, so within the natural reserve, so right now we have over a thousand non available in the natural reserve. And also we are able to cultivate a land up to 20 mu to grow the non littoria. So we are trying to setting up a special like breeding center to grow this endangered species. We also have a dedicated team responsible for the growing of the non So we could see for some of our scientists, they have spared no efforts to breed the non So Mr. Wang, so he is an expert to breed the non Can you share with us some of your stories? So for the non it is a extremely endangered species in China. As I just said, eight years ago, we only have like 14 non and right now we have over 
a thousand Omnizera. So right now, Mr. Wang is ready to tell us more stories about the Omnizera. So how many years have you been doing this? About six to seven years. So what do you have? What what is your routine work to breed the Omnizera? I have to pay attention to the condition of the Omnizera. For example, we have to remove some of the extra uh, leaves, and also we have to water all of these Omnizera. And I could see there were different fields in this area. Can you tell us more about the different species? So in this area, we are actually trying to breed the seedling of the Namizera. So we have been growing all of these seedlings for over two months. You could see it is is quite tidy. What is the survival rate? Well, it's quite good. It's above ninety five percent. What about the rest five percent? What are some of the reasons that they are not able to survive? Well, you know, this place is full of、uh, biodiversity, and some of the、uh, crabs or some of the insects, when they are coming to the field in the evening,、uh, they will actually like hurt some of the seedlings and damage these seedlings. Now we could see that Mr. Wang is paying extreme attention to、uh, protect all of those seedlings. What about this one? Well, actually, we have like so many seedlings of the Omnizera. We have like removed some of the seedlings to another areas, so they have more space to grow. So for these seedlings, for example, after two to three months, they are getting more mature, and then we are able to、um, move them to another space. So for example, this one,、um, it has been grown for about like five to six years, so it could have a red、uh, flower. So as the Lumizera is a very endangered species, can you tell us more about the features of these species? So for this kind of species,、um, it need to have a very favorable condition in order to grow.、Uh, for example, it has to enjoy the very good、uh, sunlight, and also we also need to have to pay attention to the condition of the soil. And also, I could see another species. It is called Litoria. So, what is the difference between the Nonizera and Litoria? Well, actually, it is coming from the same origin from the seedling. However, when they grow up, they will develop into different species. So maybe you could compare the leaves. So for the Litoria, the leaf is more round. And also for the Namizera, it does not have so many branches.、Uh, for these two species, they actually falling into the same category, or falling into the same family of the red、uh, from the mangrove. So we all know for the Namizera, it's very endangered species. Seven or eight years ago, we only have like fourteen pieces of it, but right now. We are able to grow over a thousand Namizera. So, how can you conquer all of those difficulties and to grow the Namizera? So, we have to learn and explore. We need to try out the try to find out the most favorable environment to grow the Namizera. With several years of exploration. We are able to、uh, find out the best rate、um, to to grow some of the seedlings. So just 
right at the beginning, the sprouting rate is only 3%, and right now the sprouting rate is about 20%. It is quite a big improvement. Well, actually, for all of these different species, they're actually endowed by the nature. All of these seeds or the seedlings, they're quite precious. We have to pay special attention to grow all of these species. We have to follow the pattern of the nature. Uh, for example, we could not grow all of these Namizara. For example, in the balcony of our home, we have to bring all of these seeds into the nature because they have to absorb the essence of the soil and also they have to absorb enough sunlight. So right at the beginning, Mr. Wang actually tried to grow some of these Namizara in his own balcony, but it didn't work. And in the end, he moved all of these seedlings to the nature reserve. So actually, Mr. Wang is emotionally attached to the growing of the Namizara. So what is your future plan, for example, for the ecological restoration of the Nanizara as well as the mangrove forest? So right now, as we have so many seedlings of the Nanizara, and also I understood that the Nanizara is an endangered species. Now we have over a thousand Nanizara, but still we have to enlar enlarge these species and also to improve the quality of the species. So this is my ultimate goal. So now I could see Mr. Wang is already retired. Uh, however, he is quite uh, passionate and also he carries a lot of expectation to grow the Namizara because he wants in the future we could create a wetland park with the Namizara. Once again, thank you for your contribution in growing the Namizara. So just now, uh, Mr. Wang shared some of his stories to breed and grow the Namizara. So actually, for the restoration of the mangrove forest, is very important part for the restoration of the wetlands. If we have a good wetland, we are able to achieve the biodiversity. So actually, each one of them, they are making their own, own contribution for the restoration for the wetlands. And today, we are actually coming to the Dongjai Harbor Natural Reserve. And also, we are getting to know the stories about the breeding of the Namizara. And yesterday, the first law on the wetland protection had already came into effect. And actually, in the Hainan province, we have over 10,000 mu of wetland. I believe with the support of the law, we will continue to have a better achievement to protect the wetland. Thank you.